Hello everyone and welcome to Finance JCL. Thank you very much for joining me today. And a bit of a change from previous videos, we've now got a face in this one, so let me know if you think that improves the video or if you prefer the old method. Today's video is on the ET Group PLC and is listed on the London Stock Exchange and those who have a certain vintage might know them as British Telecommunications. So they've recently released results and today we're just going to have a look at the highlights to see what that means. I know that Peter is one of my subscribers has previously requested a few of BT so this one hopefully answers any queries that you might have. And for full disclosure and if you st stay tuned to the end, BT is part of my existing portfolio and I'll share the performance and my previous purchase levels. So stay tuned for that. So let's start with BT Group PLC review. Now BT first came to my attention um, last year in 2020. If you look at the chart on screen, uh, they were actually at five pounds uh, going back about six years and they dropped all the way down at the start of the pandemic to uh, around about pounds. So it's a massive drop up in value. My initial kind of gut feeling uh, being a, a customer of this company and knowing a bit about their products, the company was not five times worse or less valuable than it was uh, a few years before. So I thought potentially there's a bit of value at play here. And now there has been a bit of a recovery, you can see up to two pounds and then it's dipped back a little bit. So let's look at the results and to see if this gives us any color around what's been happening. So we've got the results here from the last uh, week or so. Just before we go into the detail, for those of you that aren't particularly familiar with the BT, they are a very long-standing, well-known company in the UK. They specialize in broadband connection to the home. They've got their TV packages, including BT Sport, which has some of the um, FA Premier League matches. And they also have EE, or what used to be called Everything Everywhere, which is one of the largest and most prominent mobile networks in the UK and is participating in the 5G rollout and activity. They've got lots of different arms, lots of strings to their bow, if you will. And it's certainly a company that pretty much everyone in the UK would have heard of and probably used at some point in their life. Now, if we have a look at what's happened, and on the screen here, we've got shares of BT surge 6% on Thursday. So first of all, the excellent news is that they have reinstated their dividend payments and updated their cost savings target. If we flip over to Morningstar, and if you log in, pre-log in, you can see they have 10 years worth of history here. The dividend payment was previously halted and it was a dividend payment that was just edging up over time. So that is now reinstated, which is excellent news. And that dividend is two pence per share. So not a massive dividend, but it's back in play. And the great news as well for shareholders and indeed for customers potentially is that they will achieve two billion pounds of cost savings, an additional two billion pounds of cost savings by the end of financial year 2024 company itself is worth on the market 16 billion pounds so an additional 2 billion pounds is actually quite a decent proportion of that market cap so great news there and this cost cutting plan is a very long term plan it's been going for three years already and they've already made 1 billion of savings and 18 months earlier so that's actually really impressive uh, as long as they've done that in, in the right way which is hard to tell from the statement very slight drops in revenue 10 billion and pre-tax profit 1 billion they are still big numbers and the cost savings that are coming online should more than offset the small drops there. Now BT has an infrastructure arm called OpenReach. It's always been debate in the UK for years around whether that should be sectioned off from the main BT entity and it really wouldn't surprise me if that happened in the future. They kind of dig the trenches if you will and lay down you know, fiber optic connections for example in you know, run that sort of network. Full fiber optic is now up to 6 million premises is great news there's still probably another 20 million to go that 5g network already covers 40 uh, percent of the uk population so they've made really good progress with that infrastructure i think this is good news as well for investors they were going to look to bring us outside money in order to help fund this broadband uh, super fast broadband or fiber rollout but actually it's now self-fulfilling or self-paying they don't actually don't need to dilute any shareholders or bring in any extra investment so they can deliver the whole plan themselves, which is good news. So that is the sort of headline summary of what's come out with BT. I think the thing now is to, to have a look at the general position of the company, some of the numbers, and then I'll go through uh, towards the end, my holdings and plans for my portfolio. But now jumped over to Simply Wall Street, a really useful site. Uh, if you 
get a good overview of companies, so I'd, I'd recommend it if you aren't familiar with them. So let's have a look at the fundamentals. So that's 21 billion of revenue. And you see here there's a gross profit of 8 billion, so that's a decent number. But the expenses of 7.4 takes up quite a lot of that, and you're left with a billion or so in earnings. Historically, you know, operating income has always been, going back to 2014, 3 billion plus. And that's income, although variable to a degree, has always been at least a billion pounds a year. So it's a nice sort of baseline level there. And this kind of really good cost savings program should be reducing this expenses red column here. And that should cause the earnings to directly increase. I think that's going to be going up in the future. And there currently has a PE ratio, price to earnings ratio of 15, which is a pretty standard sort of PE level. Price sales is less than one. There's nothing here yet that shouts screaming buy if you're not a holder. But equally, there's nothing here that suggests you really need to sell this um, if you do hold it. So it's pretty much like a hold is my gut feeling at the moment. And the price to book is 1.3. Now that price to book ratio was around about 1 last year. So that's what I actually started by position. So it is a little bit more expensive than book value. And the future earnings growth from 21 analysts, that's good coverage, is 4%. So it's not great earnings growth. If you look at the moment, that sort of free cash flow is 776 million earnings of a billion. Go to March 2024, free cash flow has increased actually to 1.16. It's you know 50% increase in free cash flow, and the earnings has gone to 1.7 billion. Does that make a PE ratio for PE of less than 10? And that starts to look a little bit more interesting. And one concern in the BT's always had quite a lot of debt, and that debt to equity is probably a little bit higher than you'd ideally like has come down from what it was uh, at various points last year. Got dividend yield here, 3%. Payout ratio, 22%, according to this, going up to 38 So they're not understanding the dividend and there is potential room for growth, so that's up to bear in mind. And you know, from a UK perspective, I can't really see BT going bust unless there's wholesale legislation change or perhaps the pension uh, liabilities, which seem to pop up in news every so often, perhaps they become an issue. But you know, this has got, they've got massive customer base, millions of customers. They provide services that everyone needs. Everyone knows about them in the UK. So I think chance of failure is very low. And they consistently are profitable and looks like that dividend's going up. So I'm not worried about them from rule one. Don't lose money in terms of uh, total loss of capital. But we also need to look at the valuation to make sure that we're not going in. We're going to buy it at a high point. Insider trading, yeah, we've got one massive insider transaction, which is uh, the CEO. Quite a lot there, £2 million worth. So he's got some skin in the game. And he's bought at 163 which is very similar to the current market price. So where does that leave us? Valuation, for simply Wall Street perspective, is £3.65 fair value. And £1.60 is the current price. So they're suggesting upside of over 100%. And my personal view when I bought last year was that it could get to around about three pounds a share. Yeah, you know, their cost programs improved since then. So and I think that's that's not too dissimilar to this view. And if we have a look at Yahoo Finance here, we've got a forward P of eight, which is a very attractive level, particularly with the dividend that's in play as well. And just have a look at some of the other information. So in terms of number of shares outstanding, it's really changed for several years since 2017. There's no kind of buybacks going on. Although previously it looks like all shares were issued 2016, 2017. Book value per share is 122, so there's no kind of angle there. I can have a quick look at the current ratio. That has improved from some of the historical numbers and has been over one in recent years. So that's an improvement. And net margins are generally in that single digit zone. So what's my view? Well, first of all, I'll show you what I've got now. So here's my BT holding. Uh, since I purchased BT for my portfolio last year, it has returned uh, around about 25-26% per annum on a compounded uh, annual basis. But the FTSE 100, which is like the minimum level that I need to be beating to make a decent return in terms of my £1 million challenge, that's actually also given 25% a year. So BT has not been outperforming the market since I purchased them. And you can see that I purchased two tranches in 2020, about £1.10 or so share level and I'm actually up 37% in terms of total return so far it's 25% 26% annual basis so uh, yeah BT has performed in line with the UK market but I think the upside in the next few years for it is greater than the UK market forward PE of 8 
but there is that kind of debt and, and kind of low growth there. The growth is more so from cost cutting rather than massive increases in sales. I think if I was, uh, I think this is a hold for me because I think there's upside. If I didn't have this in my portfolio and I had you know, a decent sized portfolio ready in terms of number of holdings, this doesn't feel like a kind of a top 10 position if I was going to add it to my portfolio. So I think it's a hold for me. Uh, I'm happy that the dividends come back and can increase and I'm happy that the 4 is low. So there's probably some capital share price expansion there as well. That's my view on BT. Uh, please comment below if you have a different view. And uh, Peter, hopefully it answers your question in particular. And if you click on screen now, you'll be able to see a full breakdown of my UK portfolio for each holding and its performance in the portfolio.